we all felt this immediate bond of friendship and familiar, familiar, familiarity. Up to this point, cameo engraving was either carving the Greek or Roman classics or for portraits of portraits. I was now being offered to come and spend time in their studios and play alongside these masters. After six years of returning to the Valley to work and study, I was at one of GIA's symposiums in Los Angeles, where this very large and robust man comes running towards me shouting. I had no idea who this man was as he was calling my name out in the crowd, running towards me. It was none other than the famous Erwin Pauley, a living legend in the art of cameoing. I had come to learn the post-World War II history of Adar's recovery from the ashes of war and how it was devastated during the invasion of the Allied forces that ended the war. There was very little left of the valley with respect to carvers and gin cutting. Many were Jews either sent off to the concentration camps to die there or sent to labor camps to be the carvers of war medals for Hitler's army. There was little to almost no business in the valley after the war. The one man being credited with bringing back the, the century-old tradition of cameo carving was Richard Hahn, a true master of cameo and intaglio. The art in this tradition is owed to this one man for resurrecting the craft. Irwin has been credited for carving outside the box when it came to cameos. Up to this point, cameo engraving was either carving the Greek or Roman classics or for portraits of individuals. Erwin invented the style of doing very modern art deco and very stylish in style cameo. He is pure genius and a revolutionary in the field for his day. He was also one of the very first to sign his work, considered blasphemy in the world of lapidary art. He is a free thinker and has had a major impact on the style of cameo and intaglio carving. Well into a normal age of retirement, he is still carving to this day. Back to 1992. Erwin is standing in front of me, inviting me to come and work and play in his studio. So, upon my next trip back in 1993, I could not pass up this opportunity. Though it was just for a day, his work and his spirit as an artist had an incredible impact on my life. We have remained friends all these years and as a matter of fact, I was just with him recently at his granddaughter's wedding. Now the plot thickens. The year is 1995. As I and my wife are driving to Tuscan to do our annual trade show, she asked me, what would be your wildest dream? My answer was to co-create with the Pauli family. That year, I was walking past a booth at the Tuscan Gym and Mineral Show and was stopped dead in my tracks as I looked down in the showcase and see the most amazing carved cameo. I was so blown away by the detail. I was looking at a cameo that had been carved of an elephant with very wrinkle visible on the skin, intricately engraved in the agate cameo. I look up to see the name of the booth and it is none other then Hans Ulrich Pauli, son of Erwin. I strike up a conversation with his wife, Gabby, by telling her I knew his father, Erwin. I am so impressed with this carving. I have to meet him. Later that day, he comes by my booth in Tuscan to introduce himself. He had heard about me from his father, Erwin. He and I are the same age and are of the same generation. We immediately had this cosmic connection with common beliefs and spiritual perspective on life. We each knew we needed to get together and spend more time talking with one another. It was one of those connections where upon meeting for the first time, you just know them immediately and they seem like you know them your whole life. Gabby, his wife, was scheduled to fly home the very next morning to Germany, but decides to cancel her flight and reschedules, feeling the same way as Sharon and I that this encounter was meant to be. 
The next day during our breakfast that morning, we all feel this immediate bond of friendship. We knew that he and I needed to work together and co-create a series of objects in gemstone sculptures. That morning, we decided that him and his wife were to fly to my studio in Cali in March, the next month of that year, where we can begin the work on ideas we inspired to create. The four of us bonded and have remained very close friends for years now. This encounter began years together of co-creation where we developed and created several large visionary gem art sculptures, along with the same lines of what I started with Bernard Becker years earlier. We were creating together as one, two arts with the same philosophy inspired to share a vision in stone. Each sculpture would tell a story, a story of one's personal path of spirituality and inspiration. From the bond of our four, from the bond of the four of us, through several gym art pieces. It was a team where the Ys were as much as involved as we were in the actual work. I would travel to his studio in Adar and he would come to mine in California as these fantastic pieces would unfold. We were once again breaking a mold and creating works of art, an American and a German. Prior to this, prior to this was not even possible for two carvers from two different countries to work and create together. The work was so well received, it graced the front cover of Lapidary Journal magazine, was on display at the Heritage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia, the Harry Oppenheimer Museum in Tel Aviv, Israel, and the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh, to name just a few. Here, Hans Pauli shares in his own words, what was incredible is normally one dreams and then creates in solitude. It is very uncommon for two esteemed artists in our field to come together and co-dream and co-create. Here, similar to my relationship with Lauren Stoller, Uli and I were continuing along the same process of co-creating as two artists working as one. I had learned over the years with Lauren's this very process, two very strong and creative individuals come together in a single work of art. We were creating as one, yet each had invaluable experience and knowledge to contribute. What is required for the success of this type of endeavor is supreme trust in one another and a strong lasting bond of friendship. We must give an analogy likened to atoms coming together in attraction, bonding by electromagnetic energy and forming a perfect symmetrical crystal where one left off the other would begin. Back and forth till these pieces were completed. Truly a synergistic process where the whole is greater than the individual parts. There has to be complete trust and respect for one another's abilities to work alongside one another. Enabling each individual to contribute their genius and integrate it into one singular vision. Like Lawrence and I, Uli and I would never move forward with a sculpture until we both agreed this was the next step in the process. Reconnecting with Uli's father, Erwin, at a family wedding, where he endearingly calls me by my name, the love and deep respect has remained enduring over all these years. It is rare to find individuals whom you can trust with your life, love through thick and thin, and co-create in art and business. A map in this world where intolerance seems to be on the rise and shutting one's country's boundaries and the cry to protect what one is trying to hold on to. In history, this has never proven to work. Those cultures that excel in genius are those that allow outsiders in, tolerate them, and integrate the diverse ideas. All one needs to compare are the golden years in ancient Athens, the, re the Renaissance of Florence, Vienna of the late 1800s and early 1900s, and now the coarse Silicon Valley in my own backyard to name just a few. Each of these cultures open their borders to allow new ideas and cultures to interchange and create together. Those cultures that lack tolerance for religious or political views have died and vanished. History has marked this truth over and over again. I feel so blessed to have developed lasting and loving relationships like this in my career, a testament to one's ability to trust be tolerant of others and remain open to new ideas to relationships in life. 
My life has been changed in each and every one of these cross-cultural and co-creative processes. I would not be the person I am today without having allowed, explored, and experienced such diverse experiences. Various cultures whereby my art and life have evolved beyond my wildest dreams. I know as a fact my art is a greater reflection to this fact. I can't tell you how many times I hear from others who I encounter who say, you're living such an amazing life, or you are so lucky to work and do what you love. I say to all, live life grand, be willing to step outside one's box of beliefs and attitudes and be open to change and new ideas. Make every day count and never take anything for granted. Be more than willing to fail and make mistakes, sometimes over and over again. Be gracious and grateful to others and all good will come one's way. I know this to be my truth. I'm living the life I've dreamt for myself, and my art is the outpouring of this very essence. Beauty begets beauty, which means to me, if one creates and surrounds oneself in beauty, more beauty keeps coming into one's life. Thus, beauty begets beauty.